Hey everyone, welcome back to Yellow Voyage. So today I'll be discussing a six-month preparation strategy for the IPMAT uh, exam. Now this is just part one of the video which deals with only the students who are freshers, they're not droppers. So they have their board exams coming up. Now, uh, if you're an ICSE student, your board exam will be on 13th of Feb and if you're a CBC student, it will be on 15th of February. So um, irrespective of whether you're a state board, ICSE, CBC student, uh, your exams are in the middle of Feb, right? So how do you prepare pre-board exams and post-board exams will be covered in today's video. So essentially, I'll be dealing with some of the important topics that you can cover in your final um, final six months. And you should start with that specifically in the pre-board uh, period because uh, during your pre-board examination period, you have to focus on your board examinations as well as your competitive examination. So you should, if you aim at something which is simpler, something which will give you a lot of marks, it will be very beneficial for you all. So what are those topics? Let's first look at that. So in quant, you have series and uh, sequence and series, functions, inequalities, maxima, minima, average, modulus, uh, coordinate geometry, trigonometry questions, even log, um, set theory and matrices and determining. These are certain very easy topics and actually a lot of them are covered in 11 12 as well like set theory, matrices and determinants, uh, sequence and series, functions, modulus. These are certain topics that you do in 11 and 12 as well. So your board exam part will also be sorted, right? Uh, this is as far as quant is concerned. Now, these are certain topics that are very frequently asked and they're not as challenging. Like a lot of them are actually very easy. And when you open up your past year papers, you find uh, a lot of them uh, being very repetitive in nature, like specifically log. A lot of questions are asked. Every year, log questions are asked. So if you practice those in your last six months of preparation, they give you a better output. Uh, and as far as VRC is concerned, you don't need to invest a lot of time in that because VRC is not something you can strengthen in like the last few months, right? It's something that comes to practice in general, whatever practice you've done since in your entire schooling, right? It's not just six months of preparation or five months of preparation. So <clears throat> I would say there are essentially three elements, RC, vocab and grammar. And when you're doing RC, you're actually strengthening both your vocab and grammar. So you can uh, be very sorted when it comes to VRC. You, you can just by practicing one element, you can actually be thorough with the rest of the elements as well, which is why I think VRC is not a very hard, um, uh, hard thing to crack as far as your uh, you know the amount of time that you have to put into it is concerned um, but yes if you are a little weak at it you can invest probably uh, more of your time for VRC than you're doing in quant and uh, vice versa say your quant is uh, so weaker you can invest more time in quant and less in VRC right but all this may seem like a lot right and this may stress you out especially when your book exams are just around the corner so how exactly should you plan it I've actually made a very uh, a very detailed a Google calendar for all that you can follow. So like for your weekdays or essentially so something that you should do daily, this should be your RC, reading comprehension, vocabulary, what? This, here you should focus on the topic that I showed you in the previous slides. And then on weekends, you should start giving mocks. And even if you are, you just started your prep or you are thorough with your prep, irrespective, start giving mocks, start analyzing and doing mocks, not just attempting mocks, but also analyzing each and every mock is essential, right? So how exactly do you do it? Now for weekdays, uh, you, if you're a morning person, then you can follow this timetable. If you're not, then you can add the five to eight time post dinner, right? So like you can do it ten to uh, whatever time you like to sleep at, right? Ten to one, you can, you can keep it. So for me, I would have since I'm a morning person, I could keep this as my schedule. So five to eight, I would do quant. I would focus on this is pre boards, right? So I would focus on the topic that I put on the uh, previous slides. You could have taken a screenshot of that. You can go back and take a screenshot of it right now. Then when I return to school, uh, I think a lot of you guys will have your preparatory leaves going on. So you can essentially focus on your board prep here. And I know for a fact that like uh, in the last few weeks of your uh, board prep you don't need to you know, a lot of people have actually finished the syllabus right as, as far as i remember i just was i was just practicing mocks and like um but just solving as many questions as possible so i didn't need to invest a lot of time in my board prep which is i believe something you something you guys can do as well but still have given a lot of time for board preparation in the room calendar and then post that post board prep to take a break from it as well you can focus on vocab and rc and i'm doing three hours for that so you're doing three hours of english three hours of math and um uh, uh, if if you want to focus on logical reasoning as well, uh, pre board then you can add that time uh, either in the vocab and RC section because a lot of people might not need three hours of English, right? Or you could add that in the quant section depending on which, whichever section is weaker in your case, right? That's for the weekdays. But for the weekends, uh, specifically Sundays, I would suggest that you should follow this timetable. So the quant remains for three hours, uh, English remains for three hours. Um, 
sorry, quant in the morning remains for three hours, and then we have a quant evening time as well. So overall, you're doing six hours of quant, three hours of English, and then you're giving mocks and doing mock analysis, right? Um, now, of course, I understand that for everybody, the schedule will be very different. If you're doing self preparation, then you can go for this schedule. If let's say you have any coaching going on, then you can add your coaching time into this and manage accordingly, right? So this is according to me a very good weekend uh, schedule. Uh, mock and mock analysis. Please remember, mock analysis is very, very crucial, right? Not just giving mocks, but analyzing them. Uh, now, what happens post board exams when you just have your um, IP mat preparation or any competitive exam preparation to focus on? Then you can actually change your weekday schedule with the weekend schedule. So you can go back to this for every single day and. Uh, it will be very, very helpful. Here, you can actually add those topics that were not included in the previous slide so that you're not missing out on any uh, point in the syllabus as well. And uh, I think now that your board exams would be over, you can entirely focus on your IPMAC prep. You can invest more and more time in, um, in doing quant and grammar. So that's why I think this schedule works best. You can modify it according to whichever section is your strength. And um, this is just a brief outline of what you should follow as far as your post board exams, pre board exam preparation is concerned. I hope this video gave you a little bit of framework as far as your preparation is concerned. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and do stay tuned for the second part of the video where we will be focusing on droppers and how they can prepare in the last six months. Uh, thank you.